and when I said a bit, uh, then I mean a bit. Hello and welcome to episode number 8 of Unicorn Knits Knitting Podcast. My name is Gosia and I'm a knitter and indie dyer. You can find me on Instagram as Unicorn Knits and Unicorn Yarns. I live on Bonholm, a beautiful sunny island in the middle of the Baltic Sea, and this is my little space on the big web where I share with you my journey. So please grab your favorite cup, something to work on, and let's dive into my colorful universe. Today it's Friday, the 19th of March, and we have a beautiful sunny day. We have some lightning conditions here because um, right now it's sunny, but yesterday and today there is like on and off snowstorm, so uh, it can change rapidly, as you might notice. Um, yeah, welcome to every returning viewers. It's so lovely to have you here. And welcome to every new viewers. I hope you enjoy this content. And I have quite many knittings to share with you this time. I am gonna just uh, very quickly say that we have a knit along on Instagram with a hashtag colorwork underscore unico underscore KL where you can see and share, get inspired uh, with the projects about color works, which is big, small projects, which are complicated or simple projects. And they are so lovely. There are more and more and I love it so much. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for joining in. And there is still plenty of time. So if you are planning or you are knitting or you're finished with something, then you can put your pictures there and and uh, yeah, let's inspire each other. And I think I'm gonna post uh, some of these beautiful projects at the end of the episode, as the previous times. But uh, yeah, I have quite many um, knittings to show you. I will start with uh, what I'm wearing. <laughs> as uh, usual, I am wearing this beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, from Augustine's. It's Augustine's number seven. And last time I was um, knitting on it, it was this project that just came to my mind and uh, I just needed to cast it on because I wanted just some easy knits. <laughs> um, and then I got obsessed and it was knitted in no time. But I'm gonna show it now. So you can see it's a. Uh, yeah, that's how it looks. Um, I really love those sleeves. Um, let me come back here. And now it's getting dark. Yes. Um, about this project. So it is uh, knitted with two strands of uh, yarn. One of them is uh, silk merino, uh, silk mohair, sorry, silk mohair will lace with. And then I have uh, one strand of non superwash uh, yeah, wool, uh, also fingering wave, hold together. And then it's knitted on six millimeter needle size. Uh, it is very nice gauge, I have to say. I am used to knitting this. Uh, a mix of uh, these two qualities on four millimeters, which gives a bit more fast uh, fabric. But uh, that way the fabric is a bit more loose, but it is really like drapey and I love it really, really much. It's still very warm. It's not holy or anything, but um, it's just more cozy in a way. <laughs> And um, and that also makes it uh, to very very fast knit. So I think I knit it in just a bit more than a one week. Uh, 
and uh, yeah this is Augustine's number seven which I knitted from the from the magazine I bought and uh, this is how it looks and I am gonna put also picture on the screen if there is problems no there is fine uh, so you can see it here I did not include the strings on the on the sleeve mostly because I was afraid that it's gonna just uh, tangling around and when I'm making food or something then I just didn't want to have this um, this threads of yarn uh, getting there uh, it is a sweater that has a very nice construction so uh, you need a top down as a plain sweater with the rounded yoke um, very fast um, and then knit uh, straight down with the button part which is what you need to with the stocking stitch just with the smaller needle size for some rounds and then I made this modification that I made one round of pearl because I just like the finish it gives it's actually the same here uh, as you can see so it's a plain stocking stitch and uh, on the sleeve there is a round of decreases just over here so it caps a bit of positive is here and then there is this round of uh, decreases and then plain stocking stitch and I put it the pearl around which is not in the pattern and then you knit again with the stocking stitch and and then you sew it on the back side so it gives this very nice uh, finish which I really love um, I really love the sleeves as well they don't have any decreases here on the length of the sleeve but just to the on the wrist um, and this same structure is on the body just with wow, decreases um, and after that and that was the where I was last time I think I still had uh, one sleeve to finish which obviously I did and then uh, the fun part starts and this is uh, picking up the stitches uh, along the neckline and making the eye core edge which you can see here and picking up stitches again to make the collar um, so collar starts with the rapid uh, increase in stitches and then it has this lace pattern which is very beautiful uh, up to up to here which you just need to run 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 round and then after that um, on the behind of the self sweater which you can't see right now but then you put uh, some new stitches on the needle and then you start to knit like vertically uh, and same time where you're knitting then you're closing the stitches on the on the on the round collar and just knitting the like this line here which is also with the lace and with this beautiful finish so there is some lace on the edge and and the stitches here which is kind of hard to see because uh, it's a dark color but yeah I'm so sorry <laughs> I just really wanted to have like this navy sweater which I can use to everything uh, very fun to knit I was not very much up to colors before uh, there was this trend um, I think it was uh, in uh, like after last summer I think it's or maybe it was last summer it started the the color trend and when you could just need a color and put it on any piece of garment you have uh, I did not jump on that trend because I just maybe didn't like the look or couldn't see myself using it but um, with this design it's a bit different because it's like the old piece is knitted together and the collar is a part of the sweater and I think it fits the like the sleeves so it's kind of like uh, yeah I, I don't know what what is the style is it well I don't want to say something stupid but uh, but like this a bit historical style and uh, yeah 
I like it. That's also why I put my hair up because I feel like they really uh, fit the feeling of the sweater. I don't think it's like... Her, I really adore the design. I think it is really beautiful with the dresses. I wear it mostly with the trousers and I just have to learn it because um, I think it's quite... It's a lot. It's like very... Um, ornamental and I'm not used to that style. I am... Um, most of my sweaters are very minimalistic. Um, but yeah, but I was actually using this sweater quite a lot last week. Um, mostly because of... because I'm proud that I made it and... but also because uh, it's very nice uh, garments, very nice uh, stuff. The... the non super wash wool and lace is giving with this uh, bigger gauge and it's very very warm which i love also we still have it's still cold here <laughs> so we have some sun but it's still cold and um, this garment keeps me really warm um, and even the wool is non super wash i think it's not scratchy at all it is really nice i i'm having it on my bare skin right now and no problems at all. Um, but uh, what do you think? Do you like colors? How do you feel about that trend? And uh, as I said in the last time, I was considering if... Well, I said I'm gonna knit the garment as it is in the design and then I'm gonna find out if I'm liking this color stuff because it is different, as I said, to what I, I'm normally wearing. Uh, I'm still deliberating. It just... I feel like I don't really want to... I think it's so beautiful. So I, I guess it's gonna just stay that way. And I'm just gonna wear it when I want to be... Um, like more. I think in Scandinavia we have a lot of this minimalistic and um, unisex fashion. So this is quite different and uh, yeah, but all in all, I, I, I wear it a lot, so I guess it's just fine. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna see if there was something more I want to tell you about it. Uh, but no, I think, I think it is. So, uh, this yarn, uh, the non-superwash, it is a uh, yarn I was testing for myself, for my webshop, for Unico Yarns. Um, both testing it as uh, how to dye on it, because non-superwash is taking dyes differently. Uh, but also because uh, I wanted to test how it feels on the skin and how it, uh, it is to knit with it. And uh, I can already say that I am gonna die more on it and I'm gonna put it in my webshop soon uh, and then the more details will follow of course but uh, something to to look forward to so that was my first finished object and then I have a second finish, finish object that you have seen on the last episode as well and this is a Keisha V-neck from Refined Knitwear. So now it's done, it's finished and it's beautiful. Here you go. It has sleeves that are same length. <laughs> Yay! And uh, it's knitted uh, from two strands of silk mohair in the colorway. Um, Candy Crush. So it's like this, and that what is giving this uh, this funny effect of the stripes that are irregular on the body because of the neck shape. If the neck shape would be uh, round, uh, if it would be a rounded yoke, not a raglan, and not with a v-neck, uh, perhaps the, there will be more regular stripes around, uh, as it is on the sleeves. So you can see here. It also Colors are blending more on the on the sleeves than they are in the body, which is a f giving quite funny effect, I think. Um, 
So last time I've showed you I had this issue because I was knitting the first sleeve I was knitting I was knitting on the uh, four millimeters needle size but it was uh, with a technique of magic loop so with the long wire with uh, long needles or re regular needles and then I bought this set of Cnit which is um, uh, short small needles with the very uh, short uh, wire and I've just thought it's the same needle size and the gauge is the same in the if you look at the how many stitches they are at the sorry how how many stitches they are at uh, at the 10 centimeters but then I found out that the, the gauge if you look at the row gauge is very different so when I was knitting when I'm normally knitting sleeves, I am knitting the first sleeve and checking the, the length with the centimeter. And then the second sleeve, when I'm knitting, I am counting how many rows I knitted in the, in the previous sleeve. And then I'm knitting as many just to get, be sure to, that, that the sleeves are the same length. But what happened is that the second sleeve with the same amount of rows, it was much shorter than the first one. So I asked you what to do. And thank you for all the comments and ideas. Um, some of you said that I should rip it back and just knit on the same needles. And you also told me because I was, I was considering how it's going to be to rip the silk hair because it's not that easy to um, to to rip back because it have this small uh, hair as you perhaps all know and they are kind of uh, getting together so it's making it quite hard to split and uh, so you you recommended me to put it to the freezer overnight and then rip it back afterwards some of you said that I should I could wash it with the needle, steel needles on and wash it and dry it and see because the problem was that what's gonna happen uh, after washing, after blocking, if the roll gauge is gonna be gonna get like more relaxed and then the sleeve's gonna be the same length anyway and if I'm gonna need more rows just to fit the unblocked garment it could end up with me having one sleeve much longer than the previous or the second one uh, so yeah so so washing it and and blocking and drying and checking up uh, like with how it is after blocking there was one idea and then next idea it was that I could dump it I could use the dump to uh, to block it so it's not full washing but more like dumping so what I did I actually dump it I dumped it with my iron so uh, I put I put my garment on the floor with the towel and then put the towel over it again and then I used the dump function on my iron to to yeah to make a lot of dump and then uh, and block it that way and that was actually very good way to do it I think um, so also because I found out because I had to rip uh, the ripping bag so I found out that after blocking with the iron and dump then the, it was much easier to to rip the ribbing and silk mohair and it wasn't that big issue also with putting back needles, uh, stitches on the needles, like live, live stitches. So um, that's also the, it is an idea. So this sweater is actually totally blocked with the iron. And since that I actually bought like this, um, it's not like the iron that you can uh, ironing flat for the garments, but more like the one that you can hang up your stuff and then you have only a dump effect. So I bought this one and I'm actually using it for when I'm making the uh, small tries uh, for the gauge. Um, 
then I'm just blocking with this and it is actually working very very good also because the gammon is not it's getting relaxed the gauge is getting correct but the, um, there is not as long drying process because it's just enough to to put a towel on it and just wait a few minutes 10 minutes maybe and the 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 stuff is already totally dry and blocked which is which is a very nice hack i think uh, i started to use that a lot uh, i both uh, blocked this sweater and this sweater with this method so yeah if you're not afraid of <laughs> mistakes or making a it's i mean it's it's a tip but remember that it's you making decision so i'm not taking any uh what's called uh, uh it works for me but uh, just if you want to try it maybe try it somewhere on the little side on the back side or something how it works with your yarn if you want to try this it's like with the washing uh, uh, garments in the washing machine which i often do and i have no problems i never shrink anything uh, without my willing to do that um, i never I never destroyed any sweater that way so i often do that but i mean you have to decide by yourself how do you wash uh, your garments as well so but back to the design so it's uh, as i said keisha from v-neck from refined knitwear and um, this is this very feminine look which i also used this uh, sweater a few times it's not as warm because as you can see it's uh, made from a silk mohair so it's not that thick but i just couldn't stop myself so i used it a few times uh, this last weeks and i really love the feminine look of it i yeah i enjoy it it's, I, I think i'm gonna use it a lot when it's getting a bit warmer um we have a v-neck and last time i was talking about that i'm afraid how it's gonna be because i don't really like to pick up stitches around the neckline and there are quite many because it's quite big uh, v-neck i'm gonna put it uh, on the episode like some of the next episodes so you can see how it looks on me um but uh, this pattern is so well written that i had no issues with that it was amazing because uh, rika is she's uh, saying exactly how many stitches you have to pick um, and which part on, on each part of the sweater and uh, i actually did it it was spot on first time which has happened i think first time for me that uh, that i put the exact number of stitches i have to have uh, picking up the neckline which is super nice because i hate it so the first time and uh, and then it is a rib part so i was ribbing and uh, in the round and there are some decreases over here on the v in the front v um, which makes this beautiful line and uh, yeah so so the neckline is like uh, it's laying really nice and flat on the body um and yeah I love it. It's a raglan sweater top down. I talked about that a lot in the previous episodes, so this is very fast. And with this little puff here, which is very well described, uh, all pattern, the whole pattern is really well written. And I finished with the um, Italian bind off, is it called that? With the needle, where you use the needle for bind off. <coughs> Sorry everywhere like because i really like the look i am um, i don't enjoy it that much with the silk mohair but the look is worth it and i think that's the most part most important part because binding off is taking me just a few hours but uh, i'm gonna use this sweater a lot and for many years i guess as because hand knitted uh, garments are lasting for a long time so I'm sure I'm gonna be just very, very happy that I did this fine finish. Um, yeah. Um, from the modifications, I think I only made one, which is making the sleeves longer. And uh, and I mean, it's 
always totally up to us which length of the sleeves uh, we like. I think she called for for the sleeve that is like up to here. Um, and uh, like three fourth I was called of the sleeve. Uh, I wanted to have a full length and that's what I did. Super happy, super, super happy. And yes, this is just pure love now after the <laughs> little issue with the with the chain, the, the, the gauge, the row gauge on the sleeve. And yes, so that was my finished objects for this time, but I have still quite many things to share with you. So let's move into my works in progress. And we start with the socks because it's the most boring uh, <laughs> need. Uh, first, uh, and it's gonna be super fast one. So first the sock is uh, done as it was and the second one is still in progress. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it a lot. I just want to show you where I am. Um, so I'm here. Um, the heel is done. Yes, and I'm just making the foot. As I, I think I mentioned many times, uh, socks are not my priority. I love to wear them. I love to have them. I love to have it with me on the needle so I can knit when I can't take uh, bigger bags with the knittings with me or it, it's mindless pretty much when it's not a toe, when, you don't, when I don't need to knit toe or heel. Uh, yeah, but it's not my priority, I think, um, also because I'm not that wild with the yarn. Um, I want to use it because I bought it many years ago and it's just there, but boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish it and uh, sometime in the future. And as I said, I'm not gonna talk about it that much because You've heard all about it. And I'm gonna mention it when it's done in a month or something. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> My camera just died. So uh, oh, uh, there was no space on the camera. So lesson to myself is that I need to remember to Clean my camera before recording, but uh, we just we just go forward. Yes. So the next whip I want to show you it's the sweater that I was uh, put it, it was put on the hold because I had so many other knittings I had to do. It was uh, because of the testings I was doing with uh, deadlines and then I put in the hold and after finishing it, it was uh, like putting the hold, it was quite hard to come back to it because um, it's a color work and I just break the f broke the flow so I did not uh, <coughs> Yeah, I think it's always hard if I put some sweater on hold to come back to it because I just don't remember the construction and don't remember where I am in the pattern. So sometimes it's very hard for me to put my head around to find out where I put it and just to keep knitting. So, so yeah, it uh, took me some quite time to get there but then I thought it is a color work and I am making this uh, uh, knit along so it be, would be very very nice to have something I, I could uh, join in this and and another motivation was that of course I would love to <laughs> I would love to use it which is a, a great motivation I think so let's say Hello to Vika sweater from Tornedalsfrun, which I'm gonna put on the screen. 
And here it is. And it is black, which is just so perfect for the podcasting. And this is where we are right now. It is a cardigan with the color work uh, knitted flat and in, uh, in Tasha. So it is only on the sleeves. Oh, sorry. And it is so beautifully amazing. Here you go. I really, really love this one. And uh, uh, the pattern, the co work pattern is down, uh, done now. I'm uh, totally done with this one. So now it's just uh, knitting in one color. I, where I am is that I am, uh, yeah, I knitted uh, for the split, bef like between the body and the, the sleeves, and I put the sleeves on the hold, on this one. It's just after I finished the report, the color work report. And now I'm just knitting flat, back and forth, the body. I am holding a five millimeter needle size on my right hand and four and a half middle needle size in my left hand. And this is because I am purling loser that I am knitting. And in that way, the stitches are more similar. Um, that's a trick. And then, yeah, now it's just back and forth, back and forth before picking up the stitches for the for the sleeves. And I am looking so much forward to it. It's a warm sweater. I I make it in. I'm making it in Alafa Sloppy from Istex. So this yarn. It is. 100% wool, non-superwash, Icelandic, uh, very loosely spun, so I think it is worsted or bulky wave. Uh, it's 100 gram per 100 meter per 100 gram, and both are 100 gram. It's like this uh, natural wool, so it's uh, rougher, <laughs> it's a bit rough, uh, with this small uh, tweets. Uh, the white with black tweets and the black with white tweets. And uh, yes, um, what I want to say about it is uh, I'm looking forward to it because it's both it's because it's warm sweater from now and it's still very, very cold. But it's also because um, because uh, I think I'm gonna use it as a kind of jacket when it's getting it's gonna be a bit warmer. So I think I'm gonna use it a lot also during the spring and summer, just to have something warm when we're gonna go out and sleep in the shelters, and then I can have something very very cozy and warm uh, next to fireplace. Uh, it's just not to take like a winter jacket, and I think Iceland wood wool is great for that. Um, but yeah, it's a raglan sweater and uh, with the folded neckline and I really love it. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's quite uh, thick yarn, so I need to take breaks knitting it so I don't get the pain in my wrist and fingers, but that's just fine because uh, it's also dark yarn, so I can't work uh, on it so much in the evenings. So naturally I have a break, but I'm looking so much forward to be done. I uh, am, yeah, I was watching the podcast from uh, Inga from Knitting Traditions and she said something funny, which, no, it's not funny, but it's interesting, um, which I was not thinking about it, but yeah, when she said it, I was like, obviously that's true, is that uh, Alafa Sloppy, it's uh, like this very thick uh, yarn and it has a very nice palette of color, but sometimes it's not possible to buy the color that uh, you want. And uh, But then you can use the little sister, a little brother, the Let Lopli, which is exactly the half of it and just hold it together so it gets exactly the same thickness and then just make more possibilities for the colors. Which is super nice. I mean, 
I don't know, it's like, it's one of these obvious things that you don't think about and uh, which is also nice because I was, I bought uh, before the Christmas or after Christmas I bought a lot of Let Lovely uh, to make uh, something more warm to myself but um, now I'm I'm thinking about uh, knitting a sweater to my boyfriend because he would really like to have one more of this Icelandic warm wool sweater because he's working a lot outside. And I was considering to buy more yarn, but then I thought like I have so much yarn at home. And then I thought, but now when she said that, it, um, yeah, I, I'm just like, then I can use the little lobby, just hold it together and make this uh, very warm sweater to him which is super great uh, so yes this is about Vegas with the cardigan yeah I think it's gonna be done in a close future but uh, that means that we can go further because this is not the last whip I was casting on a quite many things so let's look here in this bag I have oh, I have made swatches <laughs> so I decided to make a slip a slip a sleepover for my daughter oh this is colors are a bit burned right now um so i made this swatches uh and dump it with the with the damper because i want to i decided that she does not have i mean she has sweaters but it's sometimes it's nice with a sleepover because then she's uh, just having uh, warm her body and not that much sleeves like arms and uh, she's quite warm kid so she often don't want to wear sweaters because she thinks it's too warm so i thought what is going to be nice is to make the sleepover that it's just gonna warm her back and and belly so that's where we are and the light is burning it a bit um yeah i made this pattern for my niece for the christmas it's a Stockholm slipover from junior size uh, from Petit Knit and I'm knitting it in seven size seven years old even she is only six or oh, soon six um, well like five and a half but um, I don't mind that sleepover is a bit bigger because then she can use longer time and there is not that much difference between six and seven years old size and so I thought it's just gonna last longer and yeah I am knitting it with two yarns that are kind of um, died by me but they kind of like didn't work out so this is a colorway Sweet Dreams Silk Mohair which, uh, which I have in my shop but just this skein was uh, that, like the color did not, um, mm, like the color migrated wrongly on this, only on this skein, so it does not have that much pink inside. So I didn't want to put it to my shop because, uh, I mean, that's not what you expect or the people who want to buy a yarn expect. Uh, but same time, I I mean, it's perfectly good yarn, and my daughter does not care. It's the colorway is not exact as the on the web page. So, so yes, I'm using this one, and then I'm using this one, which is burning a lot right now. But it's like this uh, light blue gray uh, with small speckles, and I actually don't remember what which yarn is that because it was um, I was just trying some new techniques on this yarn and it's just a single skein I had and uh, laying around for a long time now and so I decided like hey those together 
they making quite nice match and I asked her if she would like uh, a sleepover in this colorway and then she said yes I would like it because it's a rainbow like this and this way we are and the sleepover we start uh, with the back with the next shape on the back and then just knitting flat together maybe I should like this like back together and uh, and again the color color is burning a lot it's a bit darker and uh, uh, because uh, mohair it has stripes so there is like this color 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 play with uh, pink and violet and blue and then the base is just one color so it has this nice uh, yeah color play and and then there is coming some shaping on the for the for the sleeve uh, for the yeah for the body I guess because there is no sleeves for the armhole yes so we are increasing over here and then picking up the stitches from the neck making some German short rows and some decreases uh, from the neck and then increases to the armhole. For separately for both sides and then connecting in the front and after connecting the front then it just yeah there is some more decreases on the increases for the armhole and after that it just knitting play in the round in the round in the round in the round and I think I am soon I am soon in the halfway on the body so yeah and then just uh, picking up the stitches for which I love obviously uh, picking up the stitches for the armhole and for the neckline and this little piece of garment gonna be done which is also nice because I think um, sleepovers are very good to uh, summertime and springtime in the institution uh, because they're keeping the belly and the lungs uh, warm while she is free to play with uh, outside uh, with just not getting too warm just a bit warm I am knitting it on five millimeter needle size which is a bit bigger uh, I actually this this uh, swatch is uh, <laughs> it's made on a four and a half millimeter size as pattern calls but then I this because I did not swatch for this one but then I decided that uh, when I'm gonna be done with the back side I'm gonna dump it and see if the gauge is right and it wasn't so I <laughs> you can see they're connected so I started to rip the back the the back side and then and then I made a swatch on the five millimeter needle size and then I block it again and then I find out that uh, the five millimeter is catching the gauge so so yes and uh, I think I'm gonna use that if in case if I have not enough yarn but I think it's enough with those it's actually quite amazing how much uh, how much is possible to make from just one skein of uh, of fingering wave, which I think I think it's merino or merino nylon. I really don't know, but it's one of this four hundred millimeter uh, one hundred four hundred meters uh, skeins, and one skein of fifty gram uh, silk mohair. It's yeah, it's quite amazing how much you can make out of it which is super super nice um, but yes this one is in the making and I think I'm gonna do it make it done soon because it's like this needs when I'm knitting on Vega I can't knit it in the like evening evening because it's too dark and uh, the black uh, the black yarn is I have some problems like it's like it hurts my eyes in when it's dark in the in the house and then there is a black yarn and as same as the big um, bulky yarn it's uh, like knitting a lot with it it's gonna hurt my hands so it's really nice to swap with something which is both light and uh, and it's uh, 
easy to knit with because the fabric is uh, just slipping out of my stitches and the needles are smaller and the, the whole garment is not that heavy and yeah and it's much easier to knit it to, while watching some movie or something because it's quite mindless knitting right now after making the all the increases decreases and so on so it's quite easy to to make so it's a very nice uh, thing to balance to blend uh, the heavy one and the, the the easy one the sleepover so i think those two gonna be uh, done more or less same time and yes and this one is living in something very special to me because it is a project bag of course and look at it this is uh, my first uh, handmade uh, project bag um, i wanted to like uh, play a bit more with sewing i i am not the biggest sewist um, I made some garments uh, before. I'm, I made some clothes and small like sewing projects, but nothing spectacular. Um, and then I always wanted to try to make the project bags. So I was watching a lot of uh, tutorials on the YouTube and how other people does. And then there was one day that I really didn't feel like knitting and I felt like, oh, but today I could actually just try, just just to play. And I had uh, quite a lot of um, fabrics at home, which I bought secondhand in a thrift shop because I like the colors. That's all. <laughs> and this this one actually I yeah I this one I got. Um, so I decided I have nothing to lose and uh, I have only things to learn. So that is perfect. So this fabric is like uh, woven and it's a bit thicker and this one is stretchy which was I guess a mistake um, because stretchy fabrics are not that good for uh, project bags. Um, then I put some inlining uh, to make it more stiff which is nice. I make this uh, square square uh, base so it's like this and i put the inlining with uh, viscosa stuff that was also laying around in my in my place and i'm quite proud of myself i have to say it is making its job i really like the colors <laughs> and i find out that i enjoy a lot to using the sewing machine it's um and i like the process because it's much faster than knitting and surprisingly like i can start and be done with the project in one day <laughs> which as a knitter i'm not used to that and uh, yeah and then i can get something useful uh, i do have some problems with my machine because um, the machine it's a very very old one which I got uh, from someone who didn't want it uh, anymore I think it was also because uh, one like a foot uh, to sew it was broken uh, which I find out I can actually fix very easily uh, I ordered uh, my mother bought it to me uh, in uh, Warsaw and she sent it with a post like with a lot of stuff to the machine like different types of food to, uh, for different fabrics and needles and so on so i had this uh, this uh, machine and but now and it was working fine for the previous project but now i find out that it's right now it can only make the zigzag stitch which is uh, obviously not <laughs> impressive uh, so yeah, but it's fine enough to me. I really love it and I use it a lot right now. But then I also realized that I really like it and I would like to do more sewing projects, which uh, perhaps gonna come a bit more up in the uh, podcast. Can't promise anything right now because uh, don't know what's gonna happen, but uh, 
I order a machine. So I find out that, uh, I mean, this machine does cannot cannot do that much anymore. And with ZigZag, I can't do that much. Um, so I just ordered yesterday a new machine and I'm so, 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 so excited because um, I would love to make some more clothing for my daughter and my boyfriend, for myself. I would like to make more project bags, which I could use definitely um, because all my projects are often just tangling and takes time to uh <laughs> to detangle the yarn before starting to uh knit because i'm using like this like this one uh, the basket or i have one more and they if i put all the projects there then i'm they just naturally gonna tangle so i could use some more and i have a lot of stuff at home which some of them has uh, many many years because I got many stuff from some people and then because I wanted to sew more so I am super 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 excited uh, yeah and I we felt like I want to share it with you but this is not the last project today <laughs> I think it's I know it's crazy so I I dyed the new uh, yarn and then obviously I couldn't stop myself. So I started the new project. I cast it on with some swatches because that's what I do right now. So here they are. And they are so <laughs> wonderful power green, punk green. Um, this is a colorway emerald, which I was dyeing a lot previously on different bases on both merino and silk mohair and sock yarn as well. But uh, um, a yeah, long time ago, I actually ordered the yarn with the same yarn I was doing the dress for my daughter, the yarn with the, with the sparkle, the glimmer. And it actually took quite a long time to this yarn to came, come to my home because of the issues with the, you know, situation at the world. But, oh, now nah, it's showing so pretty. So I just really wanted to have something with the shine for myself. And I really wanted to have a green sweater, which is very loud and, um, complicated <laughs> so i decided i'm just gonna combine it in one sweater because yeah i mean it's gonna be like a power sweater so so this is uh, swatches with the one strand of this glimmer merino and uh, one strand of silk mohair and i made two because um i actually can't really make a gauge in any of those <laughs> It's like uh, I think um, one of them it have it has uh, one stitch more and one of them have one stitch less, and I think the solution would be to change the needles and try one more time uh, because made like the same yarn on the same needle size uh, but in a different type of material like um, three or. A wooden or metal or acrylic they giving different uh, gauges but uh, but just i decided to go with the gauge that i like mostly um, when it comes to drape and i just modified uh, um, modified the 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 size of the pattern i'm using so i'm using a bit bigger pattern than i would normally for my uh, for my size but without further ado I would like to show you what I'm knitting. So I'm, I'm here making this amazing design from Pop Knit. And it is diamonds and pearl sweater. <laughs> and right now what you can see it is just a raglan. A raglan and few bubbles. But uh, yeah, that's where we are. Um, so more about this pattern. It is a button-up 
sweater, which uh, obviously is going to give me some troubles because <laughs> I, I don't prefer that method, but, but I couldn't, I just, I don't care. I really love the design. I, I know I'm going to put it, put it on the screen so we can see what, why do I love it <laughs> and why it's going to be great with this uh, punk green uh, glittery yarn. Um, but there is like this uh, mix of bubbles, cables and texture. And uh, the pattern is um, giving you possibility to choose between making it with the long version, short version or the cat again. So I think it's super, super cool. And I am knitting with uh, a blend of those two, which is uh, this uh, Merino with Glima and uh, Silk Mohair in Emerald. And I am knitting it on a fourth millimeter needle size. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep knitting on that and then I'm going to uh, and I'm going to block it because uh, now I have this uh, dumping machine so I can dump it without washing it uh, and then I'm going to check the, the gauge again how it is and then I will uh, see if the size is going to be correct for me. There, um, there is like this panel of the cables, bubbles and texture which is in the front and the back and on the sleeves uh, and there is the some um, uh, stuck in the stitch on the sides so yeah I just need to have like 10 centimeters of the of the uh, pattern so I can dump it and then I'm gonna check the gauge on the stuck in the stitch as it is uh, uh, in the pattern as a pattern called uh, for the gauge on the stuck in the stitch, not in the uh, texture. But um, I think this is going to be really lovely for the spring. And I'm looking so much forward. I wanted to um, have this very loud sweater and I was considering if I'm going to do it in a neon yellow or in the green. But then I thought that I have quite many yellow sweaters. I mean, cardigan is going to my mother, but I have the one that you already seen, um, the Eri sweater from Isabel Kama, um, and I have one more yellow sweater, which is from Fiber Tales, uh, which I'm also gonna show you like in the future. Uh, so I have right now two yellow sweaters and I actually don't have any green. So, uh, so yeah, now I will have one. And uh, after knitting this one, it's gonna take some brain power because uh, it's a lot of texture and it's stunning and uh, it's worth it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it needs some love. The pattern is very well written by the way. And it's, bo <laughs> it's both in uh, Danish and English and perhaps in other languages. But uh, don't ask me, I'm using mostly those two. Um, yes. I think that was it for the, the my works in progress and finished objects for today. I have some other exciting stuff I would like to tell you. Um, I have, uh, as I said, I had bought some books. Then I would like to show you. They are knitted uh, of stuff related. And, and when I said a bit, uh, then I mean a bit. <laughs> um, it's not going to be like a huge review. I'm just going to show you and um, share with you. I put this one, which is a knitwear fashion design. It's a... Uh, it is from Maite La Fonte. It's about drawing knitting uh, garments. It's because I got really interested about all this knitwear, fashion design. Uh, I think it's very nice with some uh, understanding 
of uh, garments and fashion at all and they're really inspiring uh, so this one is just showing you how to draw um, like if you would like to draw the sweater how to draw it how to how to show the the details on the hand drawings inspiring I'm not gonna I don't think I can show inside it's very pretty maybe just a very fast like this one yep because I don't really want to give anything from the work of these people but it's really really nice um, if you would like to uh, yeah, draw more and I would like to I'm not that good in drawing um, I have this book designing a knitwear collection uh, from inspiration to finished garments and uh, this book is very thick and it's showing a lot of different designers how they do it is mostly about uh, machine knitting so not hand knitting but uh, mostly about I think industrial machines but uh, have beautiful pictures mm and uh, history of knitwear which i really love uh, a fun fact uh, i don't know from which book actually i i just read a part of them did not obviously read them all but the fun part is that um, back in the past there was a time that uh, yeah people were not having that many garments uh, that many clothes and um, and so there were in England there were fishermen. There was they had very this um, sweaters. They were very um, was called recognizable because of the it was like the cabled sweaters uh, in a very thick uh, wool, um, very uh, knitted on a very small needles, um, hand knitted, and uh, it was wives of the fishermen they were sitting at home and knitting it for them so they could keep warm also because of the because wool is having this uh, characteristics that they keeping people warm and they're not getting that much um, water inside so they of course they're getting wet if you fall into water but they're good to like preserve uh, because of the fat stuff uh, 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 in the in the wool so they're and they they nice yeah you know you wear wool so i guess <laughs> if you're watching this podcast so um so the fun fact is that the people were designing always their own um, cables and uh, patterns and fishermen they did not have that many so they had maybe like two three and that's mean that people could recognize each other because of the sweater and in case of death, like if sailors and fishermen fell into the water, then then while recognizing their bodies, they could look at the sweater and and they already knew who, who the person was because of the sweater, because of the cabling. And I think it's like amazing thing to uh, like in our modern world where we uh, all the time try to repeat others and we uh, like to be uh, using the same stuff and um, there is like this whole fast fashion where uh, it's mass produce produced and um, many people wear the same stuff then it's very nice to think how original knitwear is and that someone can actually recognize you because of your sweater it's quite amazing i think so uh, yeah, I think I think knitwear history is so amazing, and yeah, that's why I bought those books mostly, and also to get inspired from the designers, like big designers who uh, uh, who are doing crazy stuff. I think it's really mind opening. Um, again, not not a book that if you would like to design yourself uh, hand knitted patterns, that it's not the book for you because it's mostly machine knitting but as an inspiration i think it's quite it's quite nice um so this one 
and this one I showed you last time. And then I bought this uh, fashion design course, which is actually not about knitting. Um, it's just about fashion and about fitting the garments. Also, because sometimes I find out that I'm knitting uh, garments designed for like designs, I design them for the majority of people, but I think I would like to learn more how to design for myself, like having the design I see and then just make it my own and see what fits my body type. Uh, and so I, yeah, so it's just, just my journey. So this uh, book is showing a lot like the fashion design from the uh, different, fabrics point of view so it's both woven and uh, knitted but most like uh, for sewing it uh, there is one chapter of the knitwear uh, in it uh, but it's a lot about um, color texture um, sketching um, history which i find really interesting and and yeah, again, inspiration from different designers for years and uh, um, textured and um, qualities. Uh, yeah. And different uh, parts of the world. So, so this is this one. And then I have some more knitted related uh, two books. Um, this one I bought some time ago. I think many of you know it already. Uh, it's Japanese uh, knitting uh, patterns, which shows like, uh, for example, how to knit with cables, bubbles, lace, and it's made by Keilu uh, Hitomi Shida. Maybe. Yeah, Hitomi Shida. And uh, right now, like a week ago, I think she uh, made a, put a new bo book, which is the Japanese uh, knitting patterns number two. So I decided that I, I should have it in my collection. I actually never knitted from it. Uh, the idea is the same. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's um, you get the, the the picture of the ready pattern and then the schematic of the if you would like to knit it. It's not um, it's not put in the garment, so it's mostly if you would like to put it to your own to design your own. Um, as I said, I never needed anything from it, but I think it's so inspiring to watch it to just look at it at the textures and just imagine 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 how it would be. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, those are my, uh, my un uh, acquisition for this week, which is super inspiring, but I also can feel that it gives me a bit of chaos inside of me. It's like, I'm getting a bit of knitting stress <laughs> and it is mostly because I feel like I would like to cast on all the time and I actually have quite many works in progress right now, but I feel like I'm really stopping myself uh, to not cast on more because I would like to try different yarns I have or I'm gonna have uh, different colors which I inspire me. And then I have so many ideas after watching those um, books that I would like to try myself. Uh, which is just so hard to get out. I mean, it's so hard to put it on the paper and to my head and so on. Um, and then there are so many different people I would like to need for, like for my daughter, my my boyfriend, for myself, for my sister, for my friends. It's like I have so many ideas, and um, and there are so many. Uh, different uh, designers that are putting amazing job. I mean, they're putting so amazing uh, designs out there all the time. And oh, I just can feel that uh, I get a bit of knitting stress. Do you know that feeling like 
getting knitting stressed like you we have an urge to knit but then you have 10 different things on the needles and i'm just like okay i really need to take break of knit casting on and just try to concentrate on what i have right now and enjoy it much more and just be more in the moment of knitting which i am when i'm knitting it's mostly the time between when i'm not knitting and i'm thinking about knitting then i'm getting the knitting stress uh, yeah do you have it the same way do you <laughs> anyone anyone there um but yeah so many good 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 stuff out there um but I'm I'm happy with what I have right now and I'm looking forward to be done with them, to use them, to give them some of them and to sew uh, to, to sew with my sewing machine which is coming next week. And yeah, I I think this is enough of me bubbling here, but I'm I'm really happy that I can be here and just talk to you and chat with you and uh, read your comments and yeah and it also helps me to like sum up in my head what I'm actually doing and and concentrate and give me a focus on now which is great which I really like so I hope you enjoyed these things <laughs> this uh, this chaos but um, yeah, I think uh, I think I'm done for today. I don't think there will be any uh, short footage of the of the nature this time. But I think I'm gonna put some of the of your projects from the uh, knit along because they are so beautiful, and I think they really need a shout out. And it's Friday, so I think I'm gonna just take uh, evening off and cuddle my kid because uh, we need to enjoy them where when they are here and when they they small and we can kiss them and hug them and uh, so i'm looking forward to coming home and looking forward to have a weekend and to be with my family and go out and have fun and i hope you have it too i hope you enjoyed this one i hope you're safe and enjoying your knitting not getting knitting stress but let me know what you're knitting i would love to hear about it and i will see you next time and bye